Welcome to another top 5 guys, I'm Crystal5 and I'm a Hearthstone streamer, coach and YouTuber, so if you guys are serious about Hearthstone, you came to the right place. In this video I'm gonna give you the best decks after the latest patch, so you guys know what to play with, as well as what you're playing against. I'm gonna go over 5 of the best decks, show you their mulligans, win rates, as well as some general tips, so you can climb with ease. I'm also happy to announce I'm gonna be doing another giveaway thanks to Blizzard, and you can win yourself a regular Hearthstone bundle for the new expansion, just by dropping a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, Channel and turning on the bell notifications and also leaving a comment what you guys think I can genuinely improve in my Hearthstone content to help you more. Be honest, I have a thick di- skin and let me know how I can improve. I will be drawing the winner live on stream in the next week and I will pin the comment of the winner so either drop by the stream every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and Sunday or just check out the video in a week and see the pinned comment. Now let's check out the decks. Starting off with Big Spell Mage, this deck is still honestly just the best thing out there, man. Like, it's insane how much uh, nerfs this thing already ate, and it's still just slaying. I mean, let's let's face it, it wasn't that much uh, nerfs, but it is a second batch of nerfs for it alone, so uh, they still couldn't tone it down, so that, that really says a lot. The deck is still as strong as ever. Uh, Tsunami being an 8 mana, but summoning only one less. Uh, is still super strong, because now you can do this even faster with the help of Watercolor Artist. You can still do it as fast as you could uh, before with the help of Skyland and such, which is uh, definitely a nerf for it. And the other big change to this thing is now once you actually start casting orbs, Tsunami is gonna be going face first before the Sunset Volley, which is a little bit worse, but honestly with all this removal beforehand, uh, with your star power basically uh, jumping in first, you usually always waltz face that way. This particular variant is relying on a couple of cult neophytes, so you can have better odds against fellow mage degenerates. You still have Audio Splitter, which turned to be a staple in the deck, and the cool thing about this card is you could actually use reverbs on it, so you can even get yourself extra galactic orbs that way, and a lot of the times that is the best use for your reverb, unless you can do some uh, shenanigans with the help of Narganon, or just steal something from the opponent and such. I do have a guide video and coaching gameplay from a very close to this one list, so definitely check that one out if you really want to improve with this deck. Matchup wise, we can see you're gonna be great against most of the popular opponents here, and um, there are similar variants with a lot more sample size, like let's take this for instance. And here we can see a little bit more stuff. Uh, Rainbow, Shaman, and Urban Pally are gonna be a little bit on the negative, but not by much. Mulligan wise, here's what people are keeping when going first. You definitely want to be curving out nicely with Miracle Salesman. Watercolor is always great. Couple of gold banners, the weapon, the seashell. King Tide going first is insane. If you don't have another one drop, Frequency Oscillator will do. Greedy Partner can be great, especially with another two drop. And Robo Color is also tons of card draw, so keep that in mind. Skyla can also be pretty nutty with. Uh, a big spell in hand plus a coin or just a miracle salesman like you could just tradable for a one mana tsunami or one mana volley but with uh, orb being your highest cost card that plan could actually flop so it's a little bit tricky holding on to her nowadays also if you are facing some aggro uh, players you might want to consider some removal in the form of star power this one is actually not running rising wave so that's a little bit interesting but you should be fine you can also consider holding on to cult neophytes against uh, fellow mages so if at least you can do the tsunami make sure they can't either. And as for on the coin, it's not much different, uh, but uh, things like uh, King Tide are a little bit less keepable, like in the mirror you definitely don't want to hold this, because you basically allow them to ca cast a big spell before you, but against other opponents you can definitely still hold on to it, but the rest looks pretty much the same. For other good mage decks we can see tons and tons of different iterations of orb mages. This is the one I showed you, 62 plus uh, win rates, 760 games, definitely uh, quite nice. We can also see elemental mage is still quite playable actually very small sample size but you get the gist of it plenty more big orb mages and uh here we can even see no orb mage big mage still doing fine but obviously if you're gonna go mage might as well go with the big orb we can see other elemental mages doing okay but nothing too special sif mage is also above 50 nowadays but uh honestly still it's not the superior deck nowadays so keep that in mind on the number two spot rainbow shaman is still doing as strong as ever and honestly this deck has even higher win percent than the orb mage but let's be honest uh orb mage has a lot more iterations and a lot more sample size with pretty 
pretty much similar win rates, so uh, I really believe Mage is at the top and Rainbow is a close second, but a second nonetheless. This variation is uh, relying on some of that wave of nostalgia, single weapon, and you actually do have some skirting death in this one, uh, so you could do a little bit of extra damage. Single copy of Gold, uh, Banner and Cult Neophyte. A couple of Thrall's Gift could be pretty nice, uh, sometimes you actually use this for Bloodlust, honestly most of the time you use it for Bloodlust, uh, but in other cases you might have to Hex, you might have to Lightning Storm, it's basically a jack of all trades for just one extra mana. This is a pretty tokeny deck, uh, you could do some pretty broken things including a uh, turn 4 double Sigil of Skydiving because they do stack into a turn 5 Wave of Nostalgia or into a turn 6 Bloodlust like that, that would be tons of damage. You also have the Razzler in here, it is nerfed but it's still pretty strong and honestly you usually do drop it around turn 7 anyway so it's not that bad. And we also have Zilliax in here with the plus 1 minus 1 module. Again, I do have plenty of uh, guides about this one, plenty of gameplay, definitely check those out so you get better ideas of how to be piloting this well. Matchup wise, again, we're gonna have to look at something similar. Wow, single card difference with 50,000 games, that's a lot. And uh, here we can see Razzler Death Knight is not too great. Highlander Shaman a little bit on the negative, but everything else looks pretty, pretty green, so climbing should not be an issue. Let's just check the mulligans from this one. Uh, like, literally one card difference, and you're never gonna hold on to Skirting Death any anyway, so it doesn't matter much. Going first, here's what the stats show, just try to curve out nicely. If you have already some white shenanigans going on, Zilliax would be a great turn 3, let's say, like turn 1 Murloc, turn 2 Sigil, turn 3 Zilli would be pretty silly indeed. Patches is obviously a no-brainer, Gorgon Zormu nice and early so the cheese can fester a little bit. The card draw token ain't bad early as well, but it's not as amazing uh, as one might think. Cactus is fine, pop-up could be okay, gold banner as well, greedy partner, just try to be curving out basically and you should be on your way to victory. And as for on the coin, again, much of the same stuff. Azaleax becomes a lot more keepable here because you can coin it out even. But you're still looking for the nice cheap white stuff, uh, Gorgon Zormu still, Cookie could be insane, if you have a good sticky one drop, Trusty can work, Backstage Bouncer on turn 3 can be pretty nutty, so yeah, mulligan accordingly. For other good shaman decks, this is the one I showed, 63% with 740 uh, games, definitely not bad. I think this is the one with the bigger mulligan, so uh, uh, that one is also working quite well, just a single card difference. Highlander Shaman apparently is doing quite well uh, from Diamond to Legend 2. Battlecry Shaman, this is still a Highlander basically. More evolve oriented with the Sea Giant is also doing quite well with the matching outfits. And the cool thing about this one is matching outfits turns always uh, this thing into the 9-5 Reborn uh, Rush Giant for Death Knight. So that can be pretty consistent for you. Elemental Shaman I have been seeing a lot more of, Pirate Shaman is up there somewhere, yeah, basically plenty of iterations of these, so not a bad time to be a Shaman player. Speaking of not a bad time to be a class player, Hunter has been seeing a lot more play lately and a lot more success, and this Breakfast Highlander Hunter is actually having some really high stats, albeit with a very small sample size, but then again it's a 40 Reno Tall deck, so uh, how much more sample size could you get on a 40 unique variant? This one is abusing uh, plenty of the Mystery X energies. You're obviously running all of the good Highlander cards, including the bad ones with Marut. Uh, we also have uh, Obsidian Revenant, which is an elemental, so you have some uh, synergy with your Thunderbringer, which you could get copy of. Oh, we're even running the Avatar of Hearthstone. I'm pretty sure this is actually the deck I played and gave you a video about not too long ago. It's actually doing insanely well, as you're about to see really soon. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it basically manages to plop down uh, a ton of stats quite early and uh, it's surprisingly consistent. Like I tried this for quite a few games and it was super consistent. It just, it just curves out well and it does do some uh, pretty sick stuff with the help of the egg, with the Thunderbringer, with the location and whatnot. Could be pretty, pretty solid. Matchups, doubt we're seeing too much, but as you see, Big Spell Mage is gonna be fine, and for the Mulligan, we're gonna have to go with uh, the Kept Traits going first. Again, like, you're a Highlander deck, so anything under 4 mana would be uh, probably a decent thing to consider holding on to, if you think it's gonna uh, pan out well for you. So, uh, yeah, just, just try to get a decent enough curve going so you can reach your mid-game and start slapping from there. As for on the coin, again, much of the same stuff, um, egg's still insane, like you can coin it out on turn 3, Tildurin can be pretty good because you're going second so you will want to be reactive like that. But yeah, it, it's literally everything uh, under 4 mana, like all of these cards are under 4 mana and then we start seeing some of the 
very expensive stuff at the end. Just uh, be careful because this thing literally has 22 legendaries if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so yeah, kind of kind of on the insane side. This is the hunter list I just showed you, 61.6%, 420, blaze it up, definitely not bad. And we can also see a bunch of spell token hunters doing a little bit better, I did dabble a bit with some of those. Uh, and they definitely felt a lot better than they used to. Uh, Secret hunter is still up there, breakfast hunter uh, surprising, surprised me quite pleasantly last night. Uh, I did give you a... Like literally the last video was about this deck and I really enjoyed it. It uh, did some pretty sick stuff even in top legends so uh, you could climb high with it. And uh, yeah it's just uh, these these decks with plenty of variations of them. On the number four spot Hand Buff Pally is surprisingly still uh, quite quite at the top. Close to 60% win rate with tons of games again. And uh, yeah it's just a very very simple deck that does very well against most classes. Uh, climbing with it is not exactly rocket science, so um, as long as you put in the games, you will be climbing with this in no time. It's a simple spell, but a quite effective one. Uh, this one does run things like Razor Scale as well as Custom Enforcer, and these cards could be quite clunky against a lot of opponents. Like, uh, a lot of classes nowadays like to discover extra copies and such, and with things like this, that becomes uh, quite impossible for them to do. Uh, you're gonna be cock blocking uh, OTK decks like druids, like uh, like rogues nowadays, some mages and, and stuff like that. It can be pretty effective. You also have uh, things like Tigress Plushy, so you can heal back to full quite easily. Like these guys become tenors. Not exactly uh, very hard for you to heal back with them. Uh, Leroy is lurking in the shadows for some uh, lethal damage out of nowhere, as well as one South Sea deck hand. And you also have a couple outfit tailors, so uh, you could be charging for massive damage. Sandcastle has become a staple in decks like this. And uh, we also have the Zilliax in here, which is going to be with the power module as well as the twin module. And against some opponents, this is absolutely uh, monstrous to have to deal with. Matchup wise, plenty of stats to choose from. Dungar Druid wasn't a great matchup for you before. Honestly, nowadays you're not going to see much of D Dungar Druid, I think. Big Shaman is going to be a problem. Mech Rogue, apparently, as well. Uh, Overheal Priest is gone, Rainbow Shaman however is gonna be great against you, and uh, Big Spell Mage is gonna be a 50-50, so you should still be doing quite fine with this one. As for the mulligans, here's what it looks like going first. Like, get the good cheap stuff, get the weapon, and start buffing. Magatha can also be pretty nice, but try to be curving into her well. And for the coin, again, much of the same stuff, but Zilliax is a lot more keepable here, because uh, doing this on turn 4 or turn 5, like, uh, you could even do it on turn 4 if you get lucky with, uh... Oh, never mind, we're not running a Frequency Oscillator. Scratch that, I guess. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just uh, pretty nice doing a turn 5 Zilliax that way. It can be absolutely massive. For other Pally decks, honestly, Flood Pally also almost made it into the top 5 list. Uh, and, uh, Tourist Pally has also been doing quite well. A little bit too low of sample size here. Um, but, uh, we definitely have quite a few, uh... XL40 uh, Taurus Pally variations with similar close to 60% win rate, so it also could have definitely been here, but uh, almost 61% with 20,000 plus games definitely takes the cake. And uh, as you can see, Flood Pally is also uh, nothing to scoff at, 59 with 1600, definitely pretty sick as well. And we have several other iterations, like what the hell is this, some weird looking hand buff Pally apparently. But it seems like the Ferdy Taurus Pally is not exactly that hot anymore, huh? Kinda weird, really really felt like an okay deck still, but apparently not so much. And lastly, I'm gonna go on a stretch here, guys. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna have to pull the trust me bro card on this one. Dollhouse Druid, apparently that's how people call it. I call it Maxi Bomb Druid, the world champion, you know, no biggie, Maxi Bomb. Uh, has been uh, cooking this uh, Aulonius Druid, and in Top Legend this thing is hands down the best deck. It is the best deck, it is not an easy deck to really play well, um, it's not an easy deck to really get good win rate. I gotta be honest, according to the stats it's absolute dog shit, like absolute. Here's what it, here's where it is, complete transparency for ya. Um, yeah, this, under 50%. Or was it this one? Doesn't matter, it was under 50%. But uh, trust me dudes, this deck is absolutely, absolutely broken. People literally can't do anything against this thing. As long as you face a player that knows how to play this thing, top 100 legend incoming. I'm, I'm serious, like, 
I tried this myself, barely, barely could lose any games with it, like, I, I lost a single game with it, you know, it, it came down to a clutch at the end, like, really close stuff. It is just insanely consistent, insanely strong, but also far from a fundamental hearthstone, so uh, keep that in mind. I wouldn't recommend this for uh, first-time Legend players, I wouldn't recommend for people that really are not into OTK-style decks like this, you really, really gotta push this one to the limit to really get the most out of it. And I will be giving you a dedicated, uh, detailed guide about it tomorrow. But uh, you can also check out my already uh, guide about this one. I did do a, one like a week ago. It was slightly different, but the idea remains the same. The idea with this deck is just ramp a lot and uh, do obscene amounts of damage with the help of Alonius, uh, copied with Cover Artist, and if you get lucky with a Magic Dollhouse or two, and you're literally doing infinite amounts of damage. Like, literally... Uh, your one mana Seabreeze Chalice does 14 damage a pop with ease. Could be plenty more, like literally could be plus 50 if you really, really uh, go for the max amount of spell damage, but we're talking about theoreticals at this point. So yeah, it's really, really broken because uh, you have consistent ramp, you have consistent card draw and, and uh, sustain, and you have uh, consistent removal. Like you don't need all of your removals to kill opponents. Like you could literally use uh, free swipes uh, and uh, two rising waves to stabilize and you're still gonna have like over 100 damage later with things like uh, doubled up uh, files, things like uh, chalices, all of that stuff. It is an OTK combo deck, but you are actually free to use plenty of the OTK combo pieces uh, to be uh, stabilizing and whatnot, like the cover artist, you usually want to be using it on, on Alonius, but you could be using it on your own INR, you could be using it on your own Kiliax, you could be using it on the opponent uh, for their uh, Yag or on Kiliax and stuff like that, so plenty of things to choose from. It is really, really uh, broken right now, and you're gonna see plenty of this in Top Legend, I can, I can assure you with that. I'm not gonna talk much more about it uh, here, like hold tight for the new video, and if you can't, uh, check out the old video, it's still pretty adequate. Matchup-wise, you're not gonna see anything here, and as for the mulligan, I'm just gonna have to spitball here for you. You're looking for your ramp with New Heights, with uh, Malfurion's Gift, with Crystal Cluster, and if you have Crystal Cluster, you can also hold on to things like Innervate. You definitely like to hold on to Frost Lotus, you definitely like the location. Summer Flower could be a key, but try to be curving into it. Against Warriors, you might hold on to Miss the Vista. If you already have the location, you could also hold on to Bottomless Toy Chest. Against aggressive decks, Rising Waves could work. If you already have Crystal Cluster, Trail Mix could work. Like, it's a lot of uh, what if, uh, then if kind of deck. So uh, be careful how you mulligan. It's really gonna come down to you uh, feeling the deck a lot more. And as for on the coin, it's pretty much the same stuff, honestly. You're still looking for your ramp, for your draw. And depending on the matchup for your sustain. So be smart about it and you will be uh, climbing in no time. I actually created this cool little chart uh, for you guys, so you actually have some quick maths uh, to help you with this deck. Uh, what this chart means is this is the number of Aoloniuses you have, and uh, this is the number of extra spell damage aside from Aolonius you have, like, uh, with your locations, basically. And you can not have, indeed, more than, uh, heck, even more than five Aoloniuses if you really uh, get lucky with the double ups, but that's really theoreticals. And if you have all of that spell damage and all of those Aloniuses, this is single spell uh, extra damage, by the way. Like, if this, if you have three Aloniuses in one location, one Chalice, a pop, would be doing 34 damage, because that's plus 32 extra spell damage. But uh, more often than not, you just have one location and two Aloniuses, and that is like uh, 14 damage a pop a Chalice. 13 damage AoE from a swipe, that kind of nonsense, so really, really sick stuff. For other good Druid decks, uh, Highlander Druid is still at the top according to the stats, and we can also see some uh, plenty of iterations of it. We can also see uh, Ramp Dragon Druid doing okay, nothing close to what it used to be, and Dungar Druid, is it even uh, still playable? Doesn't seem like it. Because uh, they kind of botched the Puppet Master Dorian bullshit. You can no longer tether it out with the help of the 4 mana spell. So that definitely busted it. That's it for the top 5 decks. Now let's go to the classes we haven't mentioned. Starting off with Death Knight. Razzler Death Knights are still uh, pretty strong. But we can see that Highlander Death Knights are best right now. Which is kind of weird. But yeah, it definitely does curve out quite well. It has plenty of sustain. Nothing too uh, dominating in terms of... Uh, 
uh, game plan for them, but they're definitely uh, gonna be great from Diamond Legend against most classes in those ranks. We can also see normal wrestlers doing uh, just as fine as well with the Frost and such. Uh, so you have plenty to choose from. But they all revolve around wrestler, don't they? With Demon Hunters, they definitely took quite the beating. Like, not only are Renefalls countering them hard with that 10 extra health allowing them to stabilize, but also Treasure Distributor losing the gain attack on the on him itself also hurt them big time. So, uh, not the best time to be... Uh, Demon Huntering around. Priests also uh, took a massive hit with Overheal Priest, but as you can see, Zerini Priest is actually doing surprisingly well with a small sample size, albeit. And also Highlander Priest is back on the menus, which I for one am uh, not very happy about, but let them breathe, I guess. Let's hope they remain quite unpopular. Rogues have been on the up and up lately with the help of Shafar. And this uh, bullshit OTK uh, rogue emerged. With the help of Shafar, you can uh, basically abuse the spell burst so many times with things like Shadow Step, with Breakdance, all of that nonsense. You actually get uh, plenty of buffs that way, and that allows you to do some very big bargain bin buccaneers, as well as uh, literally OTK people with the help of... Uh, where the hell is the pirate man? South Sea Deckhand. Not everybody runs the South Sea Deckhand, like what the fuck? That's kind of weird, but um, yeah, apparently not everybody likes to charge face with tons of damage. We can also see Weapon Rogue is still doing quite fine. Well, not quite fine, it's barely 50, but you get the picture. Given, given the circumstances, it's one of the better rogue decks right now, and that says a lot. The rest, not exactly anything to write home about. With Warlock, Pain Warlock seems to be still the best uh, variant of the deck, but Wheel Warlock also felt surprisingly good. This is, uh, this is a 40 not Reno uh, Warlock deck, still plenty of uh, variations to it, so not, not exactly easy to gather decent sample size for it, but I did try the deck and it uh, worked out pretty well for me. I don't know, give it a check, I have a video about it if you were into this kind of game uh, gameplay, it was definitely pretty fun for me, so maybe it's gonna be fun for you as well. But as you can see, Insanity Warlock is definitely nowhere to be seen nowadays. It is far from what it used to be. Have we even seen any Insanity? Yeah, look at this nonsense, under 50%, it is dead in the water. And lastly we have Warrior with Odin Warrior at the top, but also Dummy Warrior has been doing uh, pretty well on these ranks, so uh, it's a pretty fun deck, I have a guide about it as well, might want to give that one a check. But uh, in the higher ranks you're really not gonna see any of this, you're gonna see plenty of Odin, plenty of Highlander, so uh, if you're uh, striving for higher ranks, Odin and Highlander are probably gonna be the way to go for you. That's gonna be it for the top 5 guys, if you found the video helpful, would really appreciate it if you uh, drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to leave a comment if you want to enter the giveaway for another standard regular bundle thanks to Blizzard themselves. Don't forget you can account for some Hearthstone coaching and also check out my Metafy Hearthstone Master Classes if you really want to get better in Hearthstone. Thanks for watching, I'm Chris05 and I'll see you in my next video or stream.